So we had the ID Tech X show right here, and you just had a keynote. So, so who are you? So I, I'm Richard Kirk, uh, Chief Exec of Polyphotonics. And I've just been talking about um, a treatment for diabetic retinopathy, which we developed a few years ago. So I've just been sharing our findings, telling everybody about it. The thousand people in here, was just, uh, and uh, I'll post the whole keynote, the video. Uh, so right here, it looks like a mask, and it looks like really exciting because there's, there's a lot of people affected by... That's right. Uh, diabetic re uh, retinopathy, or what's it called? Well, well, diabetic retinopathy is, retinopathy is a disease uh, that's a consequence of diabetes. And, it, and it, almost two-thirds of people with type 2 diabetes will go on and develop some form of diabetic retinopathy. And ultimately, it makes you go blind. How many and people is that? Well, it, it depends on, on the figures, but we're looking at in excess of 400 me million people worldwide with diabetes. So a fair portion of those uh, have this disease. So and perhaps 300 million or two, more than 200 million people? Oh, uh, with the disease, well over 100 million people with the disease, uh, but with many more with background conditions and lots of more und undiagnosed as well. So 100 million people are going blind because yes. of diabetes? Yes. Right now? Yes. And you have a solution? Yes. I mean, uh, there's another thing they're doing. They're doing this painful thing where they're getting injections, right? Well, there's, there's two types of standard injection, and one is it's, it's literally an injection into the eye, and that's uh, an intraocular injection. It's a, a drug, uh, which is a, uh, a suppressant of neovascular growth at the back of the eye. Uh, it's a VEGF suppressant. But it's as painful as it sounds. I mean, it's an injection into the eye repeatedly. While well, um, your eye is sleeping, right? You don't see the needle come in. You do. It. No, they, they clamp the eye. Ah. They, they hold it open so totally and they inject into the eye. You see everything. It's, ah, uh, it's, it's really bad. Yeah, yeah. it's awful. And, but you have a solution where, and, and is it even better, your solution, than what the injection would do? Well, we, we believe so. We, we, we've got some clinical trials that show it is. And, 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 and the beauty of uh, our treatment is it's a mask. It's not dissimilar to a kind of mask that you would wear uh, on an aeroplane. Uh, but you wear it at night as you go to sleep. And the mask emits a light into the eye. And, uh, and as you're asleep, it, it prevents dark adaptation of the rod the rod being one of the two uh, photoreceptors. And as we suppress the rod activity, we reduce the oxygen, oxygen demand at the back of the eye. And, that, and that's the principle behind it. So it's very, very simple. Uh, you could almost put it on the back of an envelope. Um, and it's, it costs a fraction of the current treatments, which is why uh, payers like the National Health Service or insurance groups are really excited. It, it could save hundreds of millions uh, in the UK alone. So uh, it's just a mask. Uh, you and how much? What kind of light is it emitting in your eye? Is it so? It do looks. You, does it look like you're looking at daylight while you sleep, or no? No, it's it's a fairly low level light, and it looks like a green light. Um, uh, but the eye adapts to it very very quickly. Uh, the brain has something called a, a Troxler effect, which kicks in, uh, and and after a few minutes, the brain just decides it's not interesting and chooses to ignore it. Uh, but anyway, it's a light that the cone doesn't see. Now our cone photoreceptor is what we use in daytime and for all our central vision. So talking to you now, I'm using my cone, I'm looking directly at you. If we were activating the cone at night, then it would be almost impossible to sleep. So the beauty of the mask is it only affects the rod and, and, and we, don't, we just don't see it. So it's, it's, it's really very, very simple. It doesn't. Does it change your uh, sleeping patterns, or do you like you, you dream in green now? Or <laughs> yeah, I know, for exactly. people that wear it. Uh, no, it, it doesn't, because what what we've, as part of the clinical trials and the regulatory approvals, we have to demonstrate that it's it doesn't change sleeping patterns. It doesn't change the electrophysiology at the back of the eye, and all of these things. So we have to test it on healthy people as well, and uh, and the and the evidence shows that it doesn't affect sleeping at all. In fact to some degree, we, 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 we would say it improves it. And that's partly because people who use this mask have a number of complications from, from the disease of diabetes. And the eye disease is just one of a number of complications. So they have interrupted sleeping anyway. But we find that they start to change their habits. If you start to do something regularly, as simple as putting a mask on every night, and then looking at how often <coughs> you use that mask, then it builds a, a you know, it forms a habit. And, and, and what we see is long-term users actually report improved sleeping patterns. 
so uh, potentially you could have like sleep sensors in there. You could like show a, a graph of how how good your sleep was. Oh, so That's uh, another side thing. Yeah, it's a really it's a really good right? point. So eventually we can have sleep sensors in there. We can record the type of sleep you're having, the quality of the sleep, and it could be linked to all these other things. So you know, the, yeah, you're, you're completely right. This is just the the first part of a uh, what could be a very you know comprehensive uh, tool to analyze uh, lifestyle and sleeping. And in your presentation, you said it's all about oxygen. So yeah. your solution? It's almost an oxygen mask. So, so oxygen is the, is the driver. It's the, it's the hypoxia that happens in the retina at night. And it happens to healthy people. It's just that that hypoxia, as the rod starts to demand more oxygen, it's the hypoxia that uh, drives neovascularization. And when you're diabetic, the neovascularization is compromised. And that's the, you end up in this vicious circle of uh, uh, oxygen starvation, neovascularization, compromised neovascularization, and then uh, you start to develop aneurysms and bleeding. So the light can trigger the oxygenation? Okay. So the, uh, the, uh, the, what the light does is suppress the oxygen demand in, in the patient at night. Suppress and it, it? Suppresses it, because it prevents the arc, uh, dark adaptation of the rod. So it's, 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 it's remarkably simple. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's triggering immune systems, right? No, Is no, no, it's, no, 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 it's, it's simply... Like natural things that yeah, are triggered. Yeah, it's, it's, it's simply suppressing the, uh, the dark adaptation of the rod. Um, very, sim very simple. Is it an LED type of light? Or? This, this particular version of the mask is an OLED, an organic light emitting diode, which is where we come from. Nice. Um, is that the best kind of light? Is it like more natural light than LED? Well, it, does that change anything? No, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't really matter. The, the light that we're putting into the eyes within the visible spectrum anyway, uh, although we've had to do lots of tests about its uh, um, wider implications of you know, illuminating the eye at night, and we've done lots of safety tests around that. Um, but, the, but the source of the light doesn't matter so much as the wavelength and what type of light it is. So a wavelength, you have a specific... It's a uh, very narrow wavelength, a very specific wavelength. The one you, you put, you, it just emits that one exactly? Yes. Yeah. And that's the one that's it's needed? very narrow. You so, don't need any other wavelengths? So what, what, what other wavelengths would start to activate other parts or other photoreceptors. And they would, if anything, uh, you know, um, activate the photoreceptors. And that's what we don't want to do. We want to suppress them. Um... I mean, this is really important and revolutionary. In, in, in your presentation, you were talking about uh, uh, one lady that, for example, got improved vision out of that. That's How right. is that possible? I, I, Isabel. Uh, I mean, it doesn't happen with everybody, but sometimes patients can see a, a, fairly, a fairly quick improvement, you know, in as little as three to four months. And, and in some patients who have worn glasses for a long time, we're changing the shape at the back of the eye to some degree, and we're, we're reducing the uh, edema. And Isabel was a, a long-term patient. She'd, she'd worn the eye, uh, worn the mask for about 12 months, but she'd also worn glasses all her life. And we, we changed the shape of the back of the eye so much that she needed a new prescription. So Isabel was quite unusual. That doesn't happen to, to a lot of people. But what we're looking for is a reduction in the size of the cyst, but also a consummate, uh, well, a parallel improvement in visual acuity. You know, the, the two go together. And so, of course, it's amazing to sell a uh, safe site, you know, people can keep seeing that that's a huge value. Yes. But right now, if you, if you get the injection, if people get injections, it costs 6,000 pounds per year. At least. Per uh, eye? Or per, per eye. Per yes. eye. Yes. 6,000 pounds per eye per year. Yes. And, and, and your that solution cost is, is definitely cheaper. Oh, it's a fraction of the cost. Uh, the NHS, you know, estimate that on adoption of this, they could save at least 300 million a year in the UK alone. So if you look at that across the world, you know, the savings are, are colossal. So uh, that's why you're working with NHS, right? NHS is a, is a key partner. They're um, one of our largest research partners, um, one of our largest funders as well. They've been funding a number of clinical trials. Uh, but we're also working in a number of other countries, in particular in Brazil, uh, we're working in the US, we're working in, um, in the Middle East uh, and in France. So we're, we're starting to, to spread our wings and move abroad. 
when you have this slide where you have all these different countries and you say the United Kingdom is in the bottom right and oh, Denmark yes. is near over there, is it the, does it have to do with the regulations and it, stuff? It like does. That? I mean, it, 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 the, the indices on this graph are very interesting. It's to do with uh, the ease of doing business, the levels of corruption, etc., of which, you know, Denmark and the United K Kingdom score very highly on. Highly? Um, well, in terms of very low levels of corruption, ah, very, okay, very so low. That, okay. but, but the countermeasure to that is the fact that there are uh, a lot of bureaucracy and a lot of regulation. It's actually very difficult to get very simple things done. And, and that's one of the problems, and that's why the UK scores so low on how, that. On how that long parallel. have we been had, uh, having this solution going on? So we, we developed, uh, we started our trials, uh, our own trials in 2011. Uh, we knew fairly quickly that the, the mask worked, but we had to develop the efficacy. We had to develop the proof. Um, we, we, we were able, in so much as we had regulatory approval about three years ago. And so we've been battling levels of bureaucracy and, and, um, and you know, the inability for institutions to adopt for the last three years. But uh, so you're talking about seven years of trying to get it uh, well, the adopted. first few years were developing the science and, and getting it through its trials. But the last uh, two or three years have been just trying to get it uh, uh, adopted. And, you know, and, and you have to look at incentives, what, you know, why, why a motivation? Why are certain institutions um, prevented from uh, acting quickly on innovation? You know, and there's, there's a number of very complex reasons for that. But uh, people are going blind, so you have to hurry up. And the get frustrating it out there, thing right? is, while you know, while while governments and institutions hesitate, people are going blind. That's really frustrating. And but how many users do you have right now? You have thousands, or what do you have? Yes, within clinical trials, we have uh, hundreds within clinical trials, and a few thousand within private patients. We have over a million hours of recorded patient use. But also, importantly, within those million hours, we don't have a, uh, a single adverse, serious adverse event reported. No adverse? No, So it's 100% good? Yes. For sure? Yeah. I mean, all these hundreds of users and thousands of users, they are basically all seeing improvements? Uh, well, no, I mean, a, a majority are seeing improvement. We can't say everybody's seeing improvements. You know, some people are non-responders. Some people have other things going on in their life, which mean that, you know, the mass it means the mask isn't as effective as it could be. What we can't do is control diabetes. So, you know, if a patient has a, a number of serious issues related to their diabetes, that will, you know, affect the, uh, the, mask, the efficacy of the mask. But in the majority of patients who wear the mask who are very compliant, uh, we see very good improvements, very good. Did and, you say 67%? Uh, the, oh. the trials have shown it's on average about 67%. Imp of the people are getting improvements? Yes. Which can pass, uh, contrast very well with the current other, other treatments. The other big treatment being the laser treatment, intra, uh, photocoagulation, which destroys the rod photoreceptors. And after a, a number of laser interventions, you start to lose your peripheral eyesight, and eventually you'll lose your driver's license. You know, you, you can't see at night. Um, the other intervention is the injection into the eye, which, is, which has some problems associated with it, but the, the biggest immediate one is the cost of that intervention. Uh, healthcare systems just, you know, can't afford it. But the, the injection is getting how many percent of people improving? Um, it's on average, well it depends on, on, on which statistics, but you're looking at about a 30% have a very good improvement, 30% see a normalization, a uh, stasis of the disease. But you have definitely better than that improvement. It, it, well, it depends, you see, Diabetic eye disease is, 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 is a fairly long disease. You have very early, early stage and you have acute late stage. And it depends at what point are you measuring. So what we've seen in our clinical trials that we have very good efficacy with late stage, but also because it's relatively cheap, we can use it earlier in the disease path. And it can be used as a treatment, but also as a prevention. And that's what's quite exciting about the mask. Because yes. it's so cheap, we can use it early. But the late stage is like the very urgent ones, right? They're going. Well, blind. I mean, if you if that, you're, you see improvements, right yeah, there, yeah, absolutely. Which if, is if, huge. It, if it's late stage, then you've you've got some vision impairment. Uh, you're, it's it's bad, you know, to even get to that point where you 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 need intraocular injections is 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 bad. But you were talking about a thousand pound 
per uh, cost? What, what's the cost of your solution? Uh, is it well, they, the, it's the, cheaper, definitely, right? The, the mask is, is, is a fraction of the cost of the other treatments. Now, uh, some of that cost is the clinical cost. So polyphotonics never sells directly to a patient. We only ever work through um, a prescribed... Um, sorry, polyphotonics only ever sells... Uh, start again. Yeah. Polyphotonics never sells to, uh, directly to a patient. We only yeah. ever work through healthcare professionals. Yeah. Uh, for example, the NHS or a private insurance company or, uh, you know, or directly with an eye, eye hospital or an eye clinic. Um, some of those costs are borne by, well, are, are costs additional overheads from the clinic because, you know, there's some time you have to spend with patients. So you have a very highly qualified ophthalmologist, clinician, talking to a patient, having regular uh, checkups. What we advise is uh, a three-monthly checkup. And this is to make sure that the mask is efficacious, it's working. Um, and, and also to see whether any alternative treatment is required. So three months seems to be the regular interval pretty much around the world. Most eye hospitals around the world have regular three-month interventions. So the mask is designed to integrate with that existing system. So it will last for three months on a battery? Or? Well, yeah, exactly. So it has an on date and an off date. You decide what that date is. So 90 days of all night yep. battery life. Yep. And then it turns in. itself off. So no need to charge it at home? Or? No, no, nothing. And there's a, an internal clock. So the mask turns on on a date that you decide with your physician. And then the mask will turn itself off in three months. And you have to go back and get a replacement. But potentially you could do other versions that would ha you people could recharge at home? Well, potentially? technology impro is improving all the time. You know, the, the light emitters are getting more efficient, the batteries are getting more efficient. And, and, and as those progress and improve, we will follow suit and, and improve the device. So eventually you could have a device that lasts longer. But what we recommend is working in conjunction with the eye hospital or eye clinic and the physician. So three month regular intervals are, uh, you know, are recommended. That, that's for patients with late stage disease. If it's being used as a preventative early stage disease, then you may only go to your uh, uh, physician once a year. And, you know, and, and that would be a different scenario. And uh, um, uh, OLED lighting is, seems to be constantly improving. Like at the Aditech X show, we're right here. Yep. Lots of talk about flexible or printed OLED. Yes. Potentially making the mask lighter. Ab absolutely. So, so as the technology is improving, initially we, we, we could only really make OLEDs on glass. Uh, but now we can make flexible OLEDs. So you have that working already? Well, we, we don't do the OLEDs. We work with a, 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 an OEM. But... Um, they're improving as well. So, so as all these improvements come through over the next few years, the mass will get thinner, it'll become more flexible, it'll be more conformable and more intelligent. You know, there's a bunch of stuff we can put in there. More sensors. More sensors, more communication, uh, looking at sleeping patterns, uh, accelerator devices. To Bluetooth. See. Bluetooth, exactly. IoT, all of these things. Uh, hub yeah. and stuff. So yeah. it just goes to the cloud or? Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's, I mean, that's all pretty much doable now it's just a uh, it's a question of time and money and effort and making these things happen awesome but um, I think it's amazing thanks a lot for saving people's vision thank you I think it's great and improving their vision even yes yeah exactly That's really amazing exactly uh, as, as I said it's one of the most common causes of blindness around the world and uh, and stopping that and preventing it and improving vision is is very exciting